Chris. Thank you for your kind invitation. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to <clears throat> give a talk on this kind of review, uh, most of the talk, and I will give you more, uh, some new ideas <clears throat> to explain mu g minus two and some other anomalies that we see uh, by today. So let me first give you the outline of my talk. I will uh, tell you what the mu and g minus two is and what the g minus two anomalies are. And uh, also there's a related to related anomalies uh, from a different experiment, which are B major anomalies. And then I will uh, tell you some others to explain both anomalies and at the same time and then conclude. So mu and g minus two, uh, before I talk about mu and g minus two, uh, let me just briefly uh, tell you about the current status of our understanding on the fundamental uh, particles and interactions, which are standard model. It's now in uh, standard model has been well tested with high precision, as you can see uh, from these plots. The Higgs coupling measurement uh, on the left hand side and also CKM, a matrix that is the flavor sector. And uh, the third uh, plot is uh, for the W <coughs> boson uh, measurement, mass measurement, and so called electroweak precision data measurement, pinning down uh, the mass, uh, Higgs mass, and the Takong mass with that uh, red, red spot. And uh, it is consistent with the measured Higgs mass at the LHC. And so I think the standard model has been being well tested uh, in this way, uh, all the Higgs mass flavors, et cetera, uh, flavor gauge structures are well tested. And, but the, there is no clue for, uh, uh, I, I think the, what is, what, how the Higgs mass is so small and uh, how, why uh, the, the fermion masses are so different and what is the origin of dark matter, so, et cetera. So uh, there should be uh, some interplay between future colliders and precision measurement and intensity uh, frontiers. So, and in particular, mm, as it comes to the flavor, uh, flavor physics in the standard model, um, the, there is the GIM mechanism, so-called GIM mechanism that uh, protect uh, flavors uh, from changing, uh, which is called Flavor changing neutral, no flavor changing neutral current at the three level. Uh, but the, uh, the, we have a flavor violation uh, in the uh, charged current at the three level, but the, because of the CKM, actually the flavor violation is parameterized by the CKM matrix. And then this CKM matrix is almost diagonal. So you have a small flavor violation and uh, <clears throat> There is the uh, no uh, flavor changing neutral current at the three level. So any new physics uh, will be sensitive at the loop level. And the lepton flavor universality is also well tested because the muon, for instance, in the case of G boson decaying into leptons, uh, there's a, I mean, this ratio of the decay rate is almost one. And also the same is true for W boson and K1 decays, etc. So except the mass differences, the older uh, measurement uh, have been pointing to the uh, flavor uh, universality. But uh, if there's a new physics appearing at the loop order, uh, I think that this uh, flavor changing neutral current process is G minus two, G minus two electric dipole moment uh, et cetera, will be a sensitive probe of new physics. So, so lepton G minus two, just to one slide uh, introduction to the uh, lepton G minus two. Uh, Dirac uh, predicted, predicted uh, from his Dirac equation that the gyro magnetic ratio, which is called, uh, which is nothing but the, sorry, let me 
make it smaller. This, uh, so he, he predicted the gyro magnetic ratio, which is nothing but uh, the spin, uh, magnet, the ratio of the spin magnetic moment to the orbital magnetic moment to unity. So this G, we call G ratio. Uh, so just from the uh, interaction between uh, electron and the, the electromagnetic field, uh, we can get uh, derive the uh, effective hem interaction Hamiltonian uh, in the presence of the magnetic field. So this uh, magnetic dipole moment is proportional to the spin of the electron and this G factor here is equal to two uh, at, the, at the three level. So, and then also if the electron is uh, uh, orbiting around uh, the nucleus, then uh, there's also corresponding uh, orbital magnetic dipole moment. And if you take the ratio of these two magnetic dipole moment, uh, it is proportional to the G factor and G factor equal to one, two, so that the ratio equal to one. Therefore, uh, you can, uh, sorry, you can uh, realize that the uh, uh, spin uh, precession uh, frequency, the uh, precession frequency uh, that is shown here on the left hand figure, the spin precesses uh, uh, with, the, with respect to the axis of the magnetic field and also uh, the electron also orbiting around uh, the center around the nucleus. So it is similar to the tidal locking in the case of moon because the, uh, the orbital frequency and the rotational frequency are equal in the case of moon. So this is kind of an interesting phenomena between the moon and the electron. But this is the case at the three level. So if you go beyond the three level, there are uh, loop corrections and we know that the quantum corrections with the virtual particles are important in determining charge and mass as well as G minus two. So correction to the G minus two uh, is called almost magnetic dipole moment. In 1948, uh, Julian Schwinger uh, computed uh, one loop corrections to the G minus two by looking at this diagram. Here there's a virtual photon as well as virtual electron. Uh, exchange it uh, when the electron uh, interacting uh, with the magnetic field. So then the correction is proportional to the fine structure constant alpha divided by two pi, uh, which is uh, about 10 to the minus three. So this small number, uh, but uh, it is important. And uh, uh, also around that time, Kush and Foley uh, did the experiment perform the experiment to measure the uh, electron magnetic dipole moment, which is consistent with the, uh, the corrections uh, uh, computed uh, by Schubinger at that time. But the, the currently, I think that this is not the whole story. Uh, we can go beyond one loop uh, corrections. Currently, uh, QED uh, corrections have pop performed up to five loop orders. And uh, the theory, theoretical calculation based on the five loop calculations agree with the experimental value uh, at the uh, 12 uh, significant digits. So this is the fantastic uh, prediction of uh, quantum field theory. Uh, and uh, actually it's very high precision uh, uh, experiment. And also, this is the uh, sum of the Feynman diagrams at five loops. Actually, I don't know how to compute them, but uh, these five loop diagrams have been uh, included. And in the case of mu g minus two, uh, the story becomes more complicated. Sorry. Uh, because the uh, muon uh, is heavier than electron by a factor of, two, factor of 200, because muon mass is about 106 uh, mega electron volt. Electron is just 0.5 mega electron volt. So because the mass is twice 
uh, larger than electron. Uh, there are uh, large contribution from uh, hadrons running in the loops. So if you have uh, any particle running in the loop will contribute to the mu and g minus two. So here H denoted, I mean, the, the hadron collections denoted by H. So actually this, uh, the contributions in the table on the left hand side summarized the kind of uh, uh, the contributions uh, loop contributions to mu and g minus two and the upper uh, panel is consists uh, upper panel consists uh, 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 of the hadronic uh, vacuum polarizations we call hadronic vacuum polarization shown in this uh, Feynman diagram as well as uh, light by light scattering shown in this diagram <coughs> uh, as well. And the QED calculation has been done at five loop orders as I uh, indicated in the previous slide. And also I think the biggest contribution coming from this QED, right? And then the electroweak, electroweak uh, contribution. And uh, actually this one is the, actually this, the, uh, this is the ha vacuum, hardware vacuum polarization and I by light uh, scattering. And the total value of the standard model uh, for mu g minus two shown here. And the uh, difference between experimental value and the standard model prediction is shown here in the bottom. So now at the time of, uh, I think 2020 last year, before the Fermilab uh, data, the significance of this deviation is about 3.7 sigma. Although uh, it's only to say about new physics, but uh, it is enough to uh, think about uh, interpretation for uh, new physics. So uh, this slide shows a summary of mu g minus two measurement. So history of mu g minus two starting from sun in, in 1979. Actually, this uh, orange line uh, is the experimental measurement, and the blue uh, part is the theoretical predictions. And the theory and experiment, they are improving in, in errors. And then now we are, have uh, <coughs> observed that the deviation is about 3.7. For human, can I ask a question, right? Um, so there actually was a very nice talk at Pascos on the experimental side of this. It was really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. And it's clear that they have to deal with all sorts of systematics. Mm -hmm. But, and like at 3.7 Sigma is actually quite significant. Um, given that people got very excited about diphoton excesses, right? At, you know, probably two Sigma plus, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and we've had 20 years. Is it 20 years now? Uh, almost since the first experiment? Yes. Why are, why are people, I mean, you know, this anomaly looks very robust, even if you forget about the second experiment, right? Mm -hmm. Presumably there's a whole literature on theory explanations and everything like that. Everything has been done, right? On the yeah, theory think, side. Uh, yeah, in the, on the theory side, we have enough time to think about a new idea. 20, 20 so years, many, right? So, so 10 years. <laughs> 10 yes. years okay but but so basically uh, i guess i guess the question i was going to ask i didn't ask it pascos but could have yeah. maybe i can ask you is like it, it really does seem like uh, the community don't know what to do do with this this anomaly so i think that uh, let me explain a little bit uh, further uh, about uh, current uh, and the status of the uh, theoretical calculations and there is also debate on that and also, actually, uh, let me ask you a, que is a question about the experiment. Then, can I ask you, like, is it clear that the second experiment has addressed potential systematics in the first experiment? Because it wasn't clear to me from the talk that the speaker didn't make enough of a comparison between the first experiment and the second experiment, but he went into very detailed explanation of the systematics in the second experiment. And it looks mm -hmm. like a difficult experiment to do, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think almost the same. Uh, uh, experiment so based then, then the result is not so surprising is so the result is not so surprising no, right the systematics i think the 
will be almost the same in both mm. I was hoping that the so, systematics would be different, right? That's, but I didn't, I, there was no discussion on this. The, in the... I thought they are, they are repeating the same experiment. So okay. I think okay. the, I think it is, it will be important to make an independent experiment, maybe based on completely different. Exactly, different technique. And, and, and where the systematics are basically orthogonal to each other, that would be essentially okay. nice. I heard that the, the, the experimental collaboration composed of different, almost different people. I mean, because after 20 years, yeah, uh, only there are only young people. But, it, but it looks like a copy, right? So it looks like a similar setup and, uh, and then you would always worry, right? Yeah, okay, so. Okay, I think thanks. Some, yeah, okay. Let, me go, let me continue. So this is the update on muon demands too from Formula Lab. Uh, I think the, in April seventh, uh, that there was an official uh, seminar from Formula Lab, which I missed for some reason. I did. I. Uh, I didn't realize that the time is different, and, but I listened to the seminar uh, that was held in Sun instead. So in any case, uh, they announced uh, value. They announced value is consistent. The one. Uh, from uh, the, the, the formula, I uh, thought so from Berkeley-Haven experiment, and uh, the now the combined uh, uh, value of the mu g minus two uh, differs from the theory calculation about uh, by about four point two sigma. So this is the I think that you have seen this plot many times. So this blue is the Brickhaven measurement, and the formula measurement is shown in red. And also this is the popular region, experimental average uh, with a certain uncertainties, and the standard model prediction shown in green with some uncertainties, taking into account the uncertainties in theory and experiment, we can see so, such a deviation, 4.2 sigma. I think that this the gymnastic experiment, I found that it's very nice and uh, you can see clear oscillation pattern uh, from here. This is the electron num number of electrons uh, coming from the decay of muons and the muon actually, this is muon stridging and muon uh, is now circulating uh, and decaying uh, into muon electron and the two neutrinos. And uh, this is the blue is the muon momentum and uh, the green line is the direction of the muon spin. And then the spin precesses as the muon is orbiting around uh, the circle. And then uh, I mean, the frequency of the uh, spin precession will be equal to the so-called cyclotron frequency, then the, there will be, I mean, if there's no mu, if g minus g equal to two, if g equal to two, the uh, precession uh, and orbital frequencies are equal, then uh, if you start at a certain angle between momentum and spin, then you are end up with the same angle after circling uh, around once. But uh, you will see a deviation between the two uh, uh, two uh, in the presence of non-zero g minus two. So this is the, just to show that omega a is the difference between spin precession frequency and uh, cyclotron frequency. Then you can see this kind of oscillation pattern uh, depending on the direction of the uh, uh, spin muon spin. So. I think there also some debate on the hadron corrections. Uh, actually, at the time of uh, world uh, white paper, this world white paper is based on the phenomenological approach to the hadron corrections. They, they took these two three values uh, for estimating the hadron contribution to the muon g minus two. But the uh, uh, before this BMW uh, announced their result. Uh, this uh, 
kind of uh, ab initio calculation of hadronic correction based on lattice, lattice QCD has a lot of uncertainties, you can, as you can see. But the, here, in the case of BMW, they reduce their errors such that uh, I think that it's competitive with these errors shown uh, in this uh, uh, phenomenology approach. Phenomenology is the approach is the R ratio, called R ratio. That is the ratio of the E plus E minus going into hadrons, the scattering, the ratio of the scattering cross sections. So E plus E minus going into hadrons divided by E plus E minus going into ion and anti muon. So I think that you are, you are familiar with this uh, from particle physics classes. But the, uh, if you take the lattice QCD, this is the, just to, you are calculating by heart on the lattice, but the, there is the limitation uh, in the volume of the lattice and the lattice uh, distances. So because of that, there are some limitation, but the, they achieve the, the uh, high precision such that the, they uh, claim that the, they got this result. And then this is the, uh, actually, uh, yeah, this is the uh, standard model. You cannot actually, in the case of this R ratio, you cannot explain the difference uh, between the standard model value and experimental value by hardware correction only. But here you see, uh, in the case, in the, if you take the BMW value, then the difference is very small. So hardware correction is enough to explain this deviation. So that means that there is no new physics if this is this correct, if this is correct. But the, there are many other issues. If you take the BMW uh, result, such as the uh, R ratio and the low energy, low energies. Uh, I think that there's some conflict, uh, between, I think in the, in the case of R ratio and the alpha running and the electro precision data, et cetera, et cetera. So there should be uh, independent test from different lattice groups. And also, as I said, there should be independent experiment of mu G minus two also. So uh, I think this is the all I can say about experiment and the standard model. So now let me move on to the new physics. And the first to, uh, thing to discuss is the model independent uh, uh, interpretation. So if this uh, anomaly, mu G minus anomaly is correct, then there must be new physics which can be parameterized by this effective operator for the magnetic dipole moment. So this star is the electron and uh, LR is the left-handed or right-handed uh, chiralities. And then uh, here F mu nu slowly, this contraction must be done correctly, mu nu, mu nu. So F mu nu is the field strength. So from this operator, you can infer the correction to the mu g minus two. Uh, by this effective operator, one over lambda. So lambda uv is the uv cutoff. Just coefficient of this operator. And just to, you can match this effective operator to what we require to explain the mu g minus anomaly. So then you can uh, drive the effective cutoff scale to be about 10 to the h gb. So it seems that this is very high scale, but uh, if you change this a little bit, then you are changing your correction a lot. So uh, this mu and g minus two is the sensitive probe of new physics beyond the standard model. But the re reality, uh, the uh, one over lambda is the kind of too, too naive to estimate new physics scale because the effective operator is suppressed by loop factor and the uh, chirality flipping, meaning that the fermion mass suppression and also there are extra uh, small couplings. So if you take those uh, into account, then new physics scale is uh, about roughly below two TV scale. Then this scale is, can be probed at the LHC, maybe and one, two, three, something like that. So that, that's why we are excited about mu g minus two, if mu g minus two is correct, the anomaly is correct. And uh, there are many interpretations, as I said before, and the anomaly has been around for 20 years. So even there are review paper, hundred 
pages long, uh, summarizing all the new ideas. And, but the, here, just the, uh, th those new physics models uh, can be classified into three classes. So one is based on supersymmetry, and the, the others are new forces or new lepton, new, new heavy leptons. So, so in each case, there are some uh, differences and some similarities. So in the case of supersymmetry, uh, there's a cutoff scale, uh, kind of this mu g minus three is proportional to the muon mass square divided by these new uh, particle scales. So mu is the hexeno, superpartner of hexeno, m2 is a vino, superpartner of W boson. So we have a kind of suppression here. So roughly, uh, in order to explain a mu g minus two in Suji, you need super particle mass to be around 100 GB. So this, uh, so light, I mean, this super particle must have been discovered at LHC already, but we haven't found any evidence. So we, we need to hide such a light particle somehow. So because of that, uh, there are alternative explanations uh, drawing more attention recently because of the null result at, L at LHC. So either new particle mass should be lighter, then you are kind of hidden uh, in the background. You cannot see it easily at the LHC. So then the Higgs-like scala or G boson, uh, like a gauge boson uh, to be about 100 MeV scale. Or in the case of laptop quark, uh, laptop quark mass is below, beyond TeV scale. And uh, also in the case of heavy leptons, uh, it is similar to laptop quark. So you only have to require the lep uh, heavy lepton mass to be around the TBK. So I think the, at the LHC, current LHC, these two possibilities, lepton quark and heavy leptons are promising. And also at Bell 2 in Japan, uh, this is intensity experiment. So you have a lot of intensity, luminosity, uh, even though these particles are very interact, interacting very weakly, uh, it is possible to uh, probe this uh, light particle at Bell 2, for instance. Okay, so this is the prospect for mu g minus 2 uh, in the future in the Fermi lab. So I think I heard that uh, they all only analyzed 6% of the full uh, data, run one data. And then the final goal is the two, final goal in 2020 will be to obtain 20 times uh, larger than Brookwood Haven data. So I think the, it'll be exciting. So the, on the other side, uh, I think the B major anomalies started from several places. So the B major is a, a composite particle, it's composed of bottom quark and the light quarks. And uh, this uh, mesion uh, decays uh, into hadron, another uh, mesion, K ion plus leptons pair, lepton pair. But here, they what they did is they uh, they measure uh, uh, two uh, decay channels. One is the, uh, <coughs> one is going to uh, muon pair. The other one is going to electron pair take the ratio of these two, uh, uh, the ratio of the branching ratios, then in the case of standard model, this ratio must be equal to one because, uh, the, because of flavor universality. But if we have a new physics, this ratio doesn't have to be equal to one. And also the reason to take this ratio is to reduce the hardening uncertainties in the calculation of this uh, uh, decay rate so this is the clean test of the lepton flavor universality. And uh, uh, the, in these two decay mode, excited K, neutral K, neutral med, B major, uh, sorry, charged B major and neutral B major, uh, they have uh, uh, found uh, the deviation from the standard model by about three sigma or 2.5 sigma. But I think the individual, uh, Significance is uh, small, about two or three sigmas, but if you combine everything, uh, it becomes about five sigma. And people claim that uh, 
the significant significance from uh, uh, significance is about uh, five sigma. So also, of course, the in in this case, maybe if you want to interpret uh, this deviation from by new physics, um, either muon or electron couplings can be modified. Then the then the question is what to modify. Do we have to modify both uh, somehow differently? But here uh, this plot shows in most importantly. Uh, so in the previous slide, this is the ratio of the uh, decay rate. Uh, but here just the decay rate of going into muons. So if you uh, look at the uh, kind of this differential uh, decay rate as a function of the momentum transfer here. Uh, in the case of electrons, you are cons almost consistent with the standard model prediction. But in the case of muon, you have some deviation. So you have a reduction in the event in the muon channels that explains uh, the difference uh, between muon and electron. So we need some new physics to reduce electron, sorry, to reduce the muon coupling. So I think that this is mostly from the LHCB uh, in the case of IK, IK star. And here, this value is current status. They have reduced the error bars. Uh, the initially, actually, the central value was about 0 0.7. The central value is moving toward the one, but I don't know how does how does uh, this uh, evolve uh, in in the future. But uh, here, still, uh, I think we still have a three sigma deviation from the standard model. So there's another anomaly uh, from different uh, decay mode, uh, starting from uh, BABA, and also there's some LHCB measurement. But uh, in the case of Bell, uh, they their measurement are consistent with the standard model. So here, so this is, I think that this crossbar, uh, the, this Bell is the one and one here. This is the standard model. But here, uh, the average value here, so that amounts to 3.1 sigma deviation from the standard model. So uh, I think there also, as we did uh, for muon G minus two, we can take the effective field theory approach to explain BDK. So it is complicated, but uh, we can say that uh, this is the kind of dimension uh, six operators composed of quarks and muons below the electroweak scale. And then this effective operators is uh, originated from these uh, loop diagrams. So in the case of, this is the RK or RK star anomalies. So if uh, this is the standard model, uh, what you are, how you predict the standard model uh, uh, Richard. So you these are based on this penguin diagram and box diagram. So in the case of bit two charm tau nu, this is induced at the three level in the standard model. So uh, if you I think the if you have anomaly in the case of bit two charm transition, uh, new physics should enter at the loop order or uh, new physics come with a very small coupling. In the case of this P2 charm tau nu, uh, we have uh, this uh, channel already at the three level in the standard model. So new phases can be sizable. It could, uh, it could be there at the three level or it could be induced at the loop order, but with a larger coupling. So in both cases, I think the 10% is ballpark, 10% correction from the new physics. Uh, so, so this is the, just to, to show that the, there are many effective operators in the case of B2Charm, there are four. And uh, in the case of B2Charm, you, we have, I think one, two, three, but that there should be more, uh, at least three uh, effective operators. So in the case of RK anomalies, uh, people try to fit the data with a different uh, coefficient. The what is best is that uh, C9 or C9 
plus C10. So then uh, if you, so we, we have a negative sign here because of, uh, because we need uh, uh, destructive interference between the standard model and the physics. We need to reduce the RK or RK star. So then uh, they said, they claim that uh, the best fit combining all the B measure measurement, uh, the, the claim is that the uh, deviation is the about six sigma. So this is huge. So also I have been uh, working on this for some time, but uh, I think that there's, there's some update about RK in the, in the last March or so. So there are some uh, new papers. There are some new papers after that, but uh, in any case, the, uh, the, the experimental value uh, for RK doesn't change much. So, so as I said before, in the case of RK, so this is the bit too, bit too strange. So this transition, if uh, uh, can be explained, when explained by G prime or laptop quarks or loop processes, so if you interpret this anomaly by uh, effective operator, the new physics scale would be 30 TV. So in the case of uh, B2 charm transition, if you interpret this by new physics, the new scale will be 3.5 TV. So I think that these two anomalies might be not correlated because of different scales, but you can try to explain them both at the same time if the uh, model is not, is uh, kind of correlating between the two. Uh, Christian? So, yeah? Yeah, so, uh, no, uh, one page before. Yeah, previous, yeah, here. So, uh, actually I'm confusing. So, I mean, by, by, and basically, uh, by considering this, uh, I, mean, I mean, new action, uh, mm -hmm. To explain the RK anomaly, mm -hmm. then you can simultaneously explain G minus two. Explain, explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to get that point. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so B anomalies. The the reason that I'm talking about B anomalies is that B anomalies and G minus two, those anomalies can be correlated. So maybe. Uh, Two anomalies are uh, more convincing. So this is the uh, prospect for B anomalies. I think the both, I think in the uh, well two and LHCB, they are improving the precision uh, up to ten percent or one percent accuracy. So I think the by the end of I don't by the by two thousand thirty something like that in both RD and Okay, uh, we will see if it is due to the new physics or not. So, and then in the, in both mu, mu and G minus two and B uh, majority case, we have seen uh, the anomalies about three sigma level. It is not a discovery yet, but uh, yeah, it is interesting, so. So uh, for for the next two, uh, 10 minutes or so, let me explain the, some of the uh, models to explain this. So the, I mean, this is the beyond normal is uh, more interesting because as I said, the beyond G minus two has been around for 20 years, but this beyond normal is has been around like, uh, I don't know, uh, six, six years or so. So it's relatively new. So actually, uh, because of that, uh, uh, with my students and Tosta, we proposed a uh, new model to explain the RK anomalies here uh, by taking the anomaly-free uh, U1 model. Actually, B minus L is B minus L gauge symmetry is well known, but uh, here uh, we want to modify uh, the the mu one. Sorry, the, we want to modify the third generation coupling. So in order to make uh, uh, G prime to be, U1 prime to be anomaly free, we are taking this B minus L. But the, this three means third generation. 
And another anomaly free combination will be L mu minus L tau. So we want to modify muon coupling as well as third generation coupling because we want to change the bottom quark coupling and muon coupling at the same time. So this is the actually natural uh, guess or somehow uh, for G prime explanation. So then uh, this uh, initially, and then, and then you can uh, derive the B2 strange transition uh, from the CKM uh, matrix here, and the effective operator can be identified easily. So G prime is a new ingredient. So actually at that time, uh, we uh, tried to find the parameter space in the case of quark coupling and lepton coupling here. The green region is the allowed region to explain these IK anomalies. And there are some diamond direct searches and also neutrino uh, production and tau decay. So there is a parameter space left uh, after imposing those constraints. And also this G prime mass versus uh, quark couplings. So you can see that still there's some parameter space left after the imion constraint. So uh, let me move, move on to uh, another explanation, which is in SUGI, if you have a supersymmetry uh, with the R parity, there is, it is not possible to explain RD or RK anomalies. So at least uh, you can explain RD anomalies by turning on R parity violation. So maybe uh, it is too much to explain all the details, but uh, uh, here the explanation is the this is Scala, a partner, uh, Scala spot partner, which is a, a spartum, the spot partner of bottom quark. Exchange it between the standard model particles such that the bottom can change it to charm, emitting tau, lepton, and neutrino. So that explained the anomaly in the RD uh, variable. But the, in this case, because uh, you need the relatively light uh, spartum, but the LHC limit already uh, has ruled out light spartum masses. So it must be heavier than about few TeV. Therefore, in the, in the case of effective operator, if this particle exchange particle is heavy, you need to have a large coupling here. But if you have a large coupling is lambda prime, then you are in trouble with a perturbativity. So that is the situation in Suji. Because of that, uh, I think the, the people, including myself, try to explain the anomalies. Uh, in, the, in terms of the laptop quark scenarios. Actually, that, this was a spartum in alperity violation, Suji. So this is smart, spartum is also uh, laptop quark, in a sense, because the spartum changing quark to lepton. So, so laptop quark is more general than spartum with alperity violation. And then this is the S1 is the uh, SU2 singlet uh, scala uh, leptocoque and F3 is the uh, SU3, SU2 triplet uh, scala leptocoque. And then here uh, you can write down the most general Lagrangian, interaction Lagrangian between this S1 and the standard model fermions, but uh, we need to be careful about introducing new couplings because if you introduce introduce all the possible couplings that you are in danger for proton decay. Because of that, uh, we need to uh, forbid uh, uh, one of the uh, couplings. I think it is shown there, but, uh, but some, yeah, I think that the phenomenological approach, but in, in the case of supersymmetry, there's a reason behind that. So in any case, uh, so this is the, Lambda and kappa here. So lambda, I think for R, this is RD anomaly and this is RK anomaly. So RD anomaly, in order to explain RD anomaly, you only take the lambda coupling. In the case of RK anomaly, you only have to take the kappa coupling. 
So here, this is the parameter space uh, for the leptococcal coupling versus leptococcal mass. And this region, uh, yellow or green region, where you can explain these anomalies. So then, uh, I think that with the perturbative couplings, you can explain. And of course, the, there are many other uh, uh, constraints. Uh, if you turn on the standard model couplings, but it is possible to satisfy all the important uh, constraints here. And this is, this is the connection to the mu g minus 2. So here, uh, in the case of singlet leptococcus here, so this diagram here, there is no muon in it. But if you turn on lambda prime, uh, then here you have a lambda prime here, then lambda and lambda prime. And then uh, in the loop, inside the loop, you have uh, leptococcus and taco. So, so with, with in the presence of this loop diagram, it is possible to explain mu g minus two, as well as RD anomalies in this model. But the another thing is the uh, electron g minus two measurement. O although there are there are differences between uh, uh, the theoretical uh, values for electron g minus two because the you, know, you need to know the value of the fine structure constant to predict the electron g minus two. But experimental value has been known. There's no, uh, I think that there's nothing to discuss about experimental value, but the, the what is the important is the, the standard model predictions. So depending on the choice of the fine structure constant, you have a different result in the deviation. So if you take the alpha fine structure constant from cesium atom, you have a negative deviation. And uh, if you take the rubidium atom, for fine structure constant, you have positive deviation, but small, uh, small deviation. So yeah, I think that this, I think that the currently there is some deviation in the measurement of the fine structure constant uh, about four, five point four sigma. So this re, uh, deviation must be reserved in the future. And also, if you, uh, in general, if you turn on new couplings. Uh, to lepton sector, you need to worry about this, this bound, the, the lepton flavor violations, muon changing to electron, tau changing to electron or muon, etc. So we haven't found any evidence for those flavor changing uh, processes that we have a limit on. And also we haven't found evidence for electron uh, electric dipole moment or muon electric dipole moment, but we have a limit. On, we have a strict limit on them. So we need to satisfy everything if you want to explain mu and g minus two. So, so this is the correlation between different leptonic signatures. So assuming that we can explain mu and g minus two. So here we are turning on electron coupling, which is lambda three one and the lambda three two is the uh, top muon coupling, and the lambda three one is the top electron coupling. So if you turn on electron coupling, you need to worry about other uh, constraints like a mu two gamma. So mu two gamma limit is the shown in this dashed uh, black line. We need to be below that. And depending on the choice of this new electron coupling, uh, you, you could be orange or purple or blue. So if you are in the blue with the larger coupling, the 10 to minus two, the ratio is something like this, then you are, would be ruled out by mu g minus two bound. So you need to be below this, this dash line. So the electron coupling is a constraint somehow. And on the other hand, in the case of, so also mu g, mu t gamma constraint, also this is the horizontal axis, horizontal axis the deviation in the electron g minus two. So let's say if you take the purple line, and the deviation in the electron G minus two is 10 to the minus 17. So current deviation from the experimental value is about 
10 to the minus 13. So it's way smaller than the current precision here. But in this case, uh, in the case of electric dipole moment here, so here, if you take the purple line, then maybe you can uh, get to 10 to the minus 29 for EDM. So 10 to the minus 29, oh, sorry, 10 to the minus 29 is the current limit here. So in the future, we may be able to probe this region because the, this purple line is taking the same value of the electron coupling. So although we don't see a deviation in the electron G minus two, we might see some deviation in the electric dipole moment. So there is one thing uh, for the correlation between different leptonic signatures. And, but here I have a, a, another uh, kind of flavor structure. Every detail depends on the, the flavor structure in this lambda kappa, lambda prime, this uh, all additional coupling uh, coming from laptop quark. So, so this is the flavor structure favoring electron demands too. So here, this uh, plot shows that uh, the deviation in the mu G minus two versus deviation in the electron G minus two. And this uh, green yellow region is for the experimental anomalies. And this uh, orange region is for electron uh, G minus two anomalies. If this is anomaly, then this is favorable region. And this dashed line uh, corresponds to the prediction in this flavor uh, structure. So if you take this ratio, ratio of the couplings to order one, then you have a nice uh, overlapping region here where we can explain both mu G minus two and uh, electron G minus two at the same time without uh, uh, worrying about mu T gamma transition. Because the mu T gamma, in the case of uh, in this flavor structure, what, what the reason that UT gamma transition is important and sizable is that uh, we have a same top quark. If you have a, if you replace uh, somewhere here by, uh, uh, let's, let's say, if you replace lambda three two by lambda three one, then you have a mu two E transition with the same loop particles. So then you have a, you are in danger. But in this uh, flavor structure, uh, here, uh, in this case, uh, we have a charm quark in the running in the loop to explain electron G minus two. So we can make a mu G minus two and electron G minus two to be independent. Although we have a new particle running in the loop, laptop quark, same laptop quark running in the loop, uh, standard the particle are different. So because of the uh, different particle masses for the standard of the particles. So we have a different, uh, di different. we don't have a uh, between E transition in this case. Question, Hyunmin. So yes. the introduce, introduction of a laptop quark, uh, it still the proton decay is safe on the laptop quark? Yes. Because the proton decay is, uh, is a very, I mean, the lifetime is pretty long. Yeah, proton decay is safe because actually this is the uh, laptop quark couplings are constrained by proton decay in general. Oh, I see, I see. So yeah. the uh, the values you said uh, to explain both uh, muon yeah. G minus two and the electron G minus two, they are consistent with this proton decay. Yeah, yeah. So so these these bilinear operators are consistent with the standard model gauge symmetry. Uh, if you want to couple this bilinear operator to laptop quark, uh, but if you allow both QL, U, D, C, D, C at the same time, you are in trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. With the trouble, with the trouble, we are in trouble with the proton decay. So here we allow only we allow for QL, not U, C, D, C. So we have Q and L. So quark doubly, lepton, lepton doubly, and also triplet Q and L. So these are doubly because of the, uh, as I said, as, as I explained in the beginning, uh, we need to have a, 
uh, left handed. So the quark current uh, in the effective operator, as you remember, uh, we need to impose uh, the vector current to be uh, left handed. The mm -hmm. left vector current in the quark sector to be uh, left handed. Because of that, we we choose to uh, we choose this QL operator instead of UCDC. Oh. <laughs> Without that constraint, we are allowed to choose either QL or UCDC. Uh, yeah, but uh, okay. So okay, the I think that this one is almost uh, last comment on this. My, my work. And I, I just wondered about uh, the, what is the role of the laptop quark? Just to let, there's a laptop quark to explain mu g minus 2 and be measured decays without any other reason. Just like uh, we have, uh, we found mu 1 without ordering, but who ordered that? Something like that. There is no reason for mu 1 to exist. So, but uh, we are repeating, I don't know why we are repeating the same species with different masses. But in the case of laptop core, I don't know why there exists laptop core, if it, it exists. So then uh, I, I try to check whether laptop core plays certain role in explaining non-zero neutral masses. So just to, uh, uh, here, I mean, the people talking about laptop quark scenarios, you can write down the uh, dimension five operator to get uh, non-zero neutrino masses. Because of that, in the standard model, you cannot explain neutrino masses without introducing dimension five operator or new particle. So, so neutrino masses are strictly massless in the standard model, but we need to go beyond that. So. So this effective operator can be derived from the laptop core couplings. So because of that, uh, but uh, here, just the, without going below blue, without going to the blue region here, just to uh, our model, the scalar laptop core and triple laptop core. Here, lepton number L, we are assigning lepton numbers. Uh, you know that the standard model set of the leptons carry non-zero lepton number, well, but we can allow to assign lepton number to the new particles. If this assignment are conflict with the different between different interactions, then the lepton number would be violated because the, this effective operator, the major five operator, breaks lepton number. If you have a new particle violating lepton number, that would be the signal for non-zero neutral masses. But uh, in our model with the S1, S3, uh, so pi is S3, there is no lepton number violation. So there is no neutral masses. Because of that, uh, I think it is necessary to extend the model by adding extra double lepton quarks. Then if you add the extra double lepton quark, then you can violate, violate the lepton number to generate neutrino masses. But uh, introducing this new lepton quark does not change our previous discussion because of small coupling here, this lambda tilde, we have uh, only small coupling uh, to explain uh, electron, uh, sorry, neutrino masses. So there's, there's some, a lot of searches for laptop quark. Just let me skip over to actually, actually the current limit. This is the already outdated. I saw some update in Pascal's, in the Pascal's plenary talk. But currently the, the limit is up to about two TV, something like that. So uh, I think the, the laptop quark bound getting stringent, more stringent. Well, here, this, the, maybe this one is the last one. Uh, so laptop quark, the, I said that there is a puzzle with a dark matter. So what is the candidate for dark matter? We don't know. But suppose that there is a single scalar dark matter. And then, okay. 
So there's a, suppose that there's a singly scalar dark matter S, then we call the, if there's a singular, singly scalar communicate with us through Higgs portal interaction, then there is a strong bound on this possibility. So because of that, uh, I think that there's a conflict between dark matter abundance and the direct detection in most cases. So in order to reduce the dark matter abundance uh, to the correct amount, you need the large coupling, but that would be in conflict with the direct detection. So the idea is the, the idea is opening new annihilation channel such that we can get the correct dark matter abundance, but uh, we are safe from the dark detection. So this is the plot uh, for the red line is the uh, relic density curve. Uh, so relic density curve changes. Uh, so here we are actually, if you don't open new channel, the relic density line will keeps, keep increasing. So this lambda is the dark matter coupling versus dark matter mass. So dark matter coupling uh, will keep increasing if you don't add new channels. But if you add a new channel, um, uh, this new channel is dark matter can annihilate into the leptocoque pair. Then you can reduce the relic line. Then you only have to introduce small dark matter coupling to explain like, uh, to explain the relic abundance. Then, then the genome bound here, genome bound, uh, you can satisfy genome bound. Okay, so and in this scenario, there are some interesting interplay between uh, actually uh, collider signatures uh, because the dark matter annihilate into the leptocoque pair and the leptocoque uh, decays into the standard model. So you have an uh, interesting signature for cosmic ray and at the collider you will have a signature for laptop quark decay. So you can correlate between uh, branching ratio of the cosmic rays uh, from documental annihilation and the branching ratio of the laptop quark decay at the collider. You have a correlation between dark matter direct indirect detection and the collider physics. So so let me let me conclude um, a little bit over time probably yeah so let me now conclude uh, the existing anomalies immune G minus two has been I think this anomaly has been have been around for a long time but probably uh, we need to make a more precise measurement uh, uh, for the other uh, leptonic uh, uh, observables then we need to uh, check kind of consistent seat check between different uh, measurement. And uh, in the case of flavor purges uh, coming from B-major decays, there should be new forces or extra colored particles such as leptoquark. And uh, because I think the, the uh, theoretical ideas are not that new. Leptoquark uh, model has been proposed already long ago actually but uh, what is new is that uh, we haven't seen any evidence at the LHC so the only possibility remaining to explain mu g minus 2 would be a uh, very very narrow region of the parameter space in suji or very light particle or very heavy particle so because of that laptop option is well motivated in Suji, or I didn't say about composite Higgs models, but uh, you can expect a naturally light scalar particle in Suji or composite Higgs models, uh, even though they are relatively heavy, we, maybe we can reach uh, such a high mass region at the LHC or the future colliders. Okay, I think this is the end of my seminar. Okay, thank you. Thank you for interesting talk. Uh, and is there any question or comment? Question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first question is is that I mean the, you mentioned about the lattice calculation about two nine two new one. What about the P calculation of, from the lattice? I think I think so. Yeah, they are also. Because the, the 
you cannot claim a large division just from the ratio. So ratio is the three sigma-ish, two sigma-ish. And also, I didn't mention that uh, this P fiber prime is the kind of a uh, differential uh, decay rate for the muon channel. So this is not the ratio, but uh, there is a large uncertainty in the theoretical predictions. I think DHMV might be some theory calculation here. So, and then this LHCB is the, what you can see from here. And then there, there is a deviation, obviously there is a deviation. So in the case of differential decay rate, certainly you need to improve the theoretical calculation for B measure in the case. And also, I think I heard that this also, this process is more interesting and more important. I mean, hardware correction is more important because you have a charm clock. The charm clock is much heavier than strange clock in the previous anomaly. Because of that, you would expect that uh, uh, this uh, kind of so-called chiral perturbation theory uh, would not so kind of have heavy quark, sorry, heavy quark effective filter theory does not apply uh, in this case, I heard. So uh, I think that they need the uh, improvement in the theoretical calculation. But they also, because of that, they are taking this ratio instead of decay rate. So if they are improving their uh, predictions, I mean, uh, experimental measurement, then we can say something. So if uh, the central value stays the same, and I think that you can see some deviation between the theory calculation and the experimental values. So if the experimental values, the central value of the experimental value stays the same with the reduced errors, then you can, we can say something. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one more, I mean, nice, I mean, nice question. So, uh, regarding the experimental data, it is still, I mean, the 6%, right? So, I mean, the data is chosen randomly, so, I mean, the, the tension will be at least maintained, even though the statistical error will be reduced. So, what do you think about the design some similar experience, I mean, experience before, like this? So, yeah, it's a, you said uh, you are comparing to the group who have an experiment? <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, I'm worrying about the data is, I mean, too small yet. Mm -hmm. So is there mm -hmm. any, I mean, that makes sense to claim that kind of tension at this level or not? That, uh, ah, I see. So I think yeah. even if uh, they have a small set of data, they can claim uh, about three or four sigma deviation because of the number of events. Uh, I mean, the number of uh, data uh, is uh, similar to the one in Brookhaven. So I think that this error, error I think so. you can see, uh, uh, I didn't have a, I think that, I think that you just, you can see this error bars for Brookhaven and the Fermilab. Uh, although the central values are differing uh, by small amount, but uh, the experimental errors, as you can see, they are, they are comparable. That means that they have a, a similar statistics. Uh, systematic errors are almost the same, I guess, but the uh, uh, statistics, they are almost uh, comparable. So, so they are, if we formulate improving their statistics, they are reducing these error bars. Uh, as they increased data set. So we'll see, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, and any other question?
Maybe I have a, a short question. You yeah. mentioned some interesting uh, signatures from cosmic rays uh, from Darmatar annihilation to cascade annihilation to leptoquarks. So, so there would be some kind of uh, specific signature? So, yeah. So we haven't studied uh, in detail uh, here. There are some several uh, interesting cases. So if uh, the dark matter mass is comparable to leptococ, such that this channel is fairly open, then the leptococ will be produced at rest, almost at rest, then the dead decays back to back. Then uh, it is similar to the case uh, of uh, direct annihilation of dark matter into uh, two standard metal particles. Yeah. So if uh, leptococ is produced at rest, but if leptococ is boosted, for instance, the mass if, if dark matter mass is larger than much larger than leptococ, then uh, leptococ will be boosted, and then the, you have uh, maybe a standard metal particle mass except top except the top core. You may ignore uh, standard metal particle masses and. Uh, spectrum uh, to be a uh, box shape. So you have a certain and the, uh, maybe there might be some gamma ray signals. I don't know if uh, the initial shape of the energy could be maintained. Uh, I was just uh, wondering Usually, the people who make uh, who publish some limits on the indirect detection, they assume either BB bar or WW. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, if I you think... get some difference, some specific signature that can distinguish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, in our case, it is very different because this mixture, mixture people talk about only single channel. Mm -hmm. They if, when they impose the limit, and then. So in our case, maybe if you take take the, the branching ratio into account, the limit might be similar. But the also difference is that uh, we have a uh, four uh, particles in the final state, like a TT bar, tau tau bar, BB bar, neutrino pair, something like that. Oh. I don't know. So yeah. it's mixture, and maybe we can think about channel by channel, multiply by branching ratio. And maybe I think that we are working on that, but uh, still, uh, still we, we are working on that. But we, I think that I agree that uh, we cannot apply the bound from BB bar or mu bar because it's a mixture of the quark and lepton and yeah. But, yeah, so and then to, yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. No, it's I don't know. interesting alternative I mean, to the common Mm. The standard is okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Simple uh, question. Yeah. So when you uh, explain the electron g minus two and the muon g minus two, you mentioned the uh, the hadron contribution only for the muon g minus two. Yeah. Uh, so the is it elect, uh, essentially the uh, mass suppression of the electron case? Or why did you mention only the uh, muon G minus two uh, for the uh, uh, hadron contribution? I think I heard that. I think that there is a there's also hadronic contribution. So for electron G minus two, uh, I don't have a number yet, but uh, I think the hadronic contribution to electron G minus two can be small. So even if there is some uncertainty, uh, you can ignore that. For instance, here also light by light scattering for mu g minus two, we have a uh, small contribution like a 92, as compared to the hadronic vacuum polarization. So in principle, this light by light scattering could be issue. We can ignore it, focusing on this. Actually, actually, the light by light contribution used to be the the biggest source of uncertainty. There was a big debate in the past. Is it settled now? 
You seem so. <laughs> I don't, but, I, don't uh, I didn't follow the this is a known so. this is an, an, a non perturbative calculation. So either it, mm. you have phenomenology plus lattice because you have yeah. here to use some measurement and then to rescale mm. different energy to to, mm. to to run through different energies. So there are a lot of uncertainties or you have lattice mm. calculation. In both cases you have uncertainties. Mm. Okay, then in the past there was also a wrong sign. I remember that there was a wrong sign in the calculation, but this, this was mm. years ago. Mm. So uh, this, uh, I mean, from the point of view of the budget of the uncertainty, what mm. is the distribution that is uh, most uncertain? Because it, it's not the light like by light, right? Mm. Not anymore. Because if I look at the mm. end, the, the values mm. in parentheses. Yeah, I think the, yeah, this is the, taken from white paper, mm -hmm. but the, this hardware contribution is large. Depends on the groups. I mean, it depends on the, which data to use. So, yeah. So hardware contribution here. Okay. So, uh, because of that, uh, although just from there, uh, I don't see, uh, yeah, it's a big problem, but uh, yeah, I think the for muon electron demands too, there was, I mean, people included the hydrogen contribution, but the, the fact that the electron is light, uh, there should be, there should be suppression. No, no, I'm talking about muon, muon, of course. Muon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, nowadays, uh, uh, the, is it, Correct to say that the largest uncertainty now is on the experimental side, no longer on the theoretical side. In the experimental, I mean, in the theoretical side. Theoretical the side. Theoretical side in the in the sense that uh, uh, I don't know the I don't know the experimental side. Which which data to I mean, actually, in the past there was an issue about E plus E minus or tau decay. The yeah. tau decay has a large uncertainty. We don't use it anymore. So E plus E minus data can be used. And uh, the now uncertainties are shrink. The, there's conflict between the lattice result and then our ratio uh, phenomenology approach. So I don't know. So still there is a, a large uncertainty in the, on the standard model calculation, just the standard. Yeah, standard it's just the standard model calculations, yes. But even including all the possible uncertainties, we cannot reconcile uh, with the measurement. This is the message. Yeah, if you take the R ratio. Mm -hmm. So I heard that uh, the BMW uh, uh, collaboration, uh, they announced their result, we provide paper, but the paper, their result was not published. So, the white paper group, I mean, this uh, Gmanus to initiative, theory initiative, they decided not to include the BMW, although the errors shown to be small. So, uh, but uh, there should be some more lattice result and there should be some agreement and yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that I didn't show this, but uh, from, BMW collaboration, they show the similar plot as this one with their <laughs> hydrology correction included, then the, just 1.5 sigma, something like that. <laughs> so it's much smaller in that case. Yeah, much smaller. It's a 4.2 sigma. Okay, so it comes so they, like uh, <laughs> 1.5 or 6 sigma. So the, okay, so it's not settled yet. Yes. I, I didn't follow the latest uh, developments. Yeah. But there, I think that there's an interesting discussion about, uh, actually, if you take the latest QCD, and then you can uh, actually, uh, how do any contribution and the vacuum polarization, how do any vacuum polarization will enter in the E plus E minus this R ratio. Then the, they try to compare with the experimentally measured cross section but that they have find disagreement in the low energy. So, and also if you change uh, the hydrogen vacuum polarization, you will have a correction in the running of the fine structure constant. 
also there is some deviation. I think two or three sigma deviation in each case, and also electroweak precision data, uh, the, they, are, they have a problem, so. So you would say that BMW is disfavored? Yeah, from those uh, three. <laughs> so that's still uh, possibly disfavored. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, and any other question? Okay, if there's no more question, then stop here and thanks to speaker again. Yeah.